A Reading by Luminosity, written by Edgar Allan Poe. The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden who the angels named Lenore, nameless here for evermore, and the silken sad uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now to still the beating of my heart I stood repeating, tis some visitor entreating, entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door this is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer, Sir, said I, or Madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came a-rapping, and so faintly you came tap-tapping, at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you, here I opened wide the door, darkness there and nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before, but the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word Lenore. This I whispered and echo murmured back the word Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul with me a burning. Soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. That let me see then what the wreath is. As this mystery explore, let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped the stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least abeyance made, not a minute stopped or stayed, he but with mean of lord or lady, perch above my chamber door, perch upon a bust of palace, just above the chamber door, perch and set and nothing more, than this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou I said art thou Art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly foul to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little revelancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast above the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such as name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour.
Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before, then the bird said nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply, so aptly spoken, doubtless said I, what it utters is its only stock in store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hopes that melancholy burden bore, of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling, straight I wheel the cushioned seat in front of a of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy thinking. What this omnium, omnibus bird of yore? What's this grin ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and omnibus bird of yore? Meant in croaking nevermore? This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with lamplight gloating o'er she shall press on nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tucked floor. Wretched, I cried, thy God hath let thee. By these angels he has sent thee. Respite, respite, and nepenthe. From thy memories of Lenore, quaff, oh quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore, quaff the raven, nevermore. Prophet said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted. On this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden within the distant Aiden, it shall clasp a saint maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, who the angels named Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word or sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting, get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Paris, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and the light o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore!